Here we go. Here's a complete set of two-dimensional Fourier, um, Fourier um, derivative theorems. Um, so, if you want to, um, if you want to generalize, the, if if you if you want to make them more specific to what you're doing, um, just um, um, just blank out the uh, the x here uh, and the kx on this side. All right. So uh, basically, um, if you in the time domain you take you take your time series f of t, and you take its time derivative, right, df dt, then that has a Fourier dual in the um, in the uh, um, <clears throat> that is a Fourier dual in the uh, frequency domain omega of taking that you know Fourier transform component at that omega and multiplying it by the complex number minus i omega. So this is like yet another example. You know a derivative, right? We've thought of that as a filter, and and here, um, you know, and filters get get. Convolved, you know, the you got the derivative operator to work with in the time domain, but in the frequency domain, you just multiply. So this is just like that. You're multiplying by some, you know, just multiplying two complex numbers in the frequency domain, and that's all it is. Uh, let's see. So then, uh, you know, the the one D. Um, um, the one D second time derivative. Is just oops. okay. It's just that, you know. So and and as you can see, you take minus i omega and you square it, right? You apply the derivative operator twice, and so you multiply it by minus i omega twice. So it's minus omega squared, and that is all you need to answer c, three c. You can do it in a in a couple of lines. Um, you know what I should do is uh, I should take this page and insert it <laughs> in the earlier notes. There we go. So the first thing um, is looking at this figure, right? Um, right. And and knowing you know what that is in uh, z plane. Yeah. Okay. So um, this is a poll. Um, tell me how many poles are there in this figure? Yeah. What? Why is it? Because it's right on the. The real axis, yeah. Uh, and it's uh, is it inside or outside the unit circle? Yeah. What's another way you can tell? Can you tell that from the um, the time series, the filter time series on the left? Yeah. If it was inside the unit circle, it would blow up. Um, okay. So let's go to. Um, uh, Okay, so um, uh, yeah, I think I got one pole in here, and uh, now I've put it on the unit circle. So that's close to what that figure one is. Um, you know, if I move it down to and put it right on the unit circle, right? It's a constant, infinite energy, not very realistic, and then it would. Diverge if I put it below the unit circle, but it's it's up here, and there's just one pole, right? And you know I move it slightly off, right? And and the shape changes totally because there's two poles, of course. Yeah. So um, all right. 
So now, um, um, uh, what they want is an analytic expression for the spectral um, response of this pole. Okay, and so let's go to. So I guess our question kind of is like, what is that supposed to be like? An f of omega kind of thing? Yeah, it's a function of of omega. You know, and 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 you know, um, they want to see that that I want to see that it's it's kind of like you know one over one over uh, absolute value of omega. You know, in terms of its shape, right? Which is what it looks like, right? Yeah. Um, so we just want to see it analytically, and it's a you know it's a, a it's an expression that involves omega and uh, cosine, and it involves rho, and um, and it's uh, um, um, and it's you know it gives you the the spectrum. So so what you have is uh, okay. So let's find. Uh, so this is probably in later in the notes. You know, it's where I started talking about poles. And these are here. I'm talking about zeros, and then we use this feedback as a way of gently um, getting our ourselves into a uh, a pole. Um, all right. So here is a uh, um, an expression using this crazy uh, uh, complex omega zero for a, a, the location of a pole, um, and there's that there's that spectrum right. Here's the situation right. So really, what we want is the the spectrum of of this very uh, situation. So. Um, Can we, uh, you know, can we write out the z polynomial that is, that is that is that pole, right? And um, and it, it's actually up here in the uh, um, in the leaky integration discussion. Um, it's the one over one minus rho z. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Oh boy, that's exciting! <laughs> uh, you can see it, right? <laughs> uh, you know, all kinds of things I could do here. Um, yeah, that's not what I meant. Um, yeah. So. Um, um, so that's uh, um, that's f of z. So what is the um, what is the spectrum of f? How do you compute the spectrum of f? That f with conjugate, you know, the one over z. The, they, yep, there it is, right there. Oops. Okay, that highlighted it. Okay. Okay. Uh, now. Um, so that'll give you the spectrum in terms of z, right? You can multiply out the, the z polynomial, okay, and uh, that's the uh, that's the first step, um, and and uh, but that's not in terms of omega. So how do you get it in terms of omega? So you'll 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 multi, you know you'll take you'll take the polynomial that's circled in red. And you'll uh, you'll find its complex conjugate f of one over z, right? Which is not not hard. Um, and then um, and then you'll uh, um, you'll you'll um, uh, you'll multiply that out, and you'll get a, a rational filter. Um, uh, ah, okay. There is there is one trick I want to warn you about, right? Notice that um, ah, I'm being a little too tricky here. Okay, um, here I plotted s, but what's 
what's uh, what's plotted here, okay, there's the I say amplitude spectrum, right? And I say it's like one over omega, right? So now you're you're going through the, the algebra to prove it. Okay. Um so um uh, I want the square root of, of s, right? So after you get the, the spectrum, you got to take the the spectrum is the power spectrum, right? This uh, this thing outlined in blue gives you the s is the power spectrum. That's a that's a Clairbaut thing. Um, and then if you take the square root of s, you have what's known as the amplitude spectrum. Okay, so that that's one little trick. Now, how do you um, how do you get the, uh, um, you know, so you'll multiply out the polynomial and you'll have it in z. How do you get it in terms of omega? Um, yeah, it's one way to think of it. What about using the uh, the omega definition of z? Um, which is e to the i what um, e to the i omega delta t, right? Delta t is one, so don't worry about that. Um, and um, and then what is you know what what is the complex number that e to the i omega delta omega is? Exactly. Then you can then you can work it all out. And it took me a whole page, you know. So <laughs> it's not a not a that's not a small amount of algebra. Six eight lines. Okay. So then our next question is number five, and we were wondering if we were well. <clears throat> this one's about finding poles. Yeah. And I guess what we were confused about was, um, well, I don't know. Well, like the pole is when it goes to, you know, infinity or whatever, right? It makes it blow, makes the whole thing like unstable, right? Right. So we figured when the denominator went to zero, that would be pole. So we found the roots of the denominator. Is kind that of that's right, because okay. the poles are the zeros of the denominator, right? So then. So you got to figure out what's on the what's you know where does the denominator go to zero? Um, okay. And so, so there's a the, right. It's in terms of uh, z p squared, right? So um, so you um, you you know you basically have a quadratic equation in in z p, okay. which is the 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 pole. So we did that, and we plotted the poles. Outside, so but we're, we're confused about, I guess, is what is the decay time of the filter and its resonant frequency? Sure. Okay. Because I'm not sure we talked about that. So. About how far? About how far um, outside the? Um, about how far outside the unit circle is is the? Um, are not the poles? The poles not the poles. Yeah. Really yeah. It, you got it. Right. Right. You got it. Um, uh, yeah. So so here, um, you know, um, I mean, I would accept any way you decided to, uh, you know, any way that looked reasonable for you to define decay time, um, and um, you could do that. Uh, a typical that that would work, you know, um, and I'd accept that. But um, there's a uh, um, uh, the one that Clairbout uses most often is um, when when it falls to uh, one over e. The value falls to one over e. Um, so uh, so let's see. Let me let me get to the right uh, question here. Um, so this is page sixty. Uh, okay, I got to go back again. Uh, exercise one. Um, right, okay. Um, so, uh, um, uh, 
right. So there's, uh, let's see. Okay, so we got, um, you know, two, two poles like that, something like that, right? And um, uh, so there's a, um, um, think in terms of this, uh, uh, and you can see what we got here is a decaying sinusoid, right? Uh, maybe I can make it. Yeah, you know, this makes it a little more obvious. Okay. Um, and, you know, we'd like to know... Uh, um, um, yeah, well, and, and especially relative to the frequency, right? Let's see, if I move it up in frequency, right, you know. Uh, you know, here the decay time is, is, is long compared to the, uh, the frequency. Here the decay time is is short compared to the frequency or compared to the wavelength, the period. <clears throat> but uh, um, um, you know, using simple functions, how would you how would you make this um, this uh, uh, decaying sinusoid? What what you know could you compose a, a, a function that would give a decaying sinusoid of this type? Exactly. Okay. So so now now um, 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 can you express you know a, a sinusoid in terms of, of an exponential as well? The the Euler exponential, right? Mm -hmm. So you could have and so the Euler exponential has a has a imaginary exponent, mm -hmm. right? And the decaying exponential has a real exponent. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so um, really, what we've got here is two exponentials multiplied by each other, and um, um, and one of them has uh, has a real exponent, and the other one has an imaginary exponent. Uh, does that does that ring a bell um, on uh, on anything? Um, uh, like, um, let's see, where did I put it? With this crazy um, uh, complex frequency, right? So you have a, a, a this character, this complex characteristic frequency for the uh, for the pole, and and you know here's so here's a pole that's uh, you know outside the unit circle, and um, it's got this crazy complex uh, frequency. Um, so uh, uh, um, what you've got here is um, um, e to the i omega zero, right? Now, now, so here's e to the i omega zero, and we break it out: real omega zero plus i times the imaginary part of omega zero. Okay, um, and uh, uh, you know what if I what if I wanted to factor out, you know, could I create two exponentials from this, and and would they be would I be adding them or or multiplying them? Because the exponents are added, right? So the exponentials would be multiplied, right? So this right here is. Um, you know, gives you those two, those two uh, um, exponentials, right? And one's going to be the the one with the imaginary part of omega zero is going to be a real exponent exponent, and the one uh, that uses the real part of omega zero is going to be the the uh, going to have an imaginary exponent, and so that gives you your decay and your sinusoid. Um, and um, since uh, delta t is, once you once you get your decay time, 
it's actually not going to be in second. It's going to seconds. It's going to be in the number of samples because we're assuming delta t is equal to one. So you'll be able to express your your decay time in terms of the number of samples. Okay, so back to the the problem of um, of defining the decay time. You know, half life would work. Uh, you'll get a different answer than Clairbaut's answer, but but that's okay. Um, um, Let's see. Let me um, let's see. Do I have that exponential plotted anywhere? Not really. Um, I don't know. This this feedback time is is okay. So let's let's just use this as an example. Um, okay. Uh, what is that? Oh, here's the typewriter tool. Okay, so um, uh, let's see. Um. So the x the real exponent part of it, the exponential, the exponential fall off. Let's call that uh, f of uh, of t, right? And um, so let's uh, uh, let's define. Um, 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 so we got e to the you know we we uh, we want it to be one over e and that's the time we want to see it drop to you know where it goes to one over e of what it was at what it started with so uh, we'll have e to the power of um, of of this exponent and it's uh, uh, it's minus t over tau you know I. Uh, I always write it as a, as a Greek letter, um, a small Greek letter tau. Um, so, so, you know, if you if you solve this for tau, then you get the the time. The uh, you know tau is the is the time for it to fall to one over e of what it, what it started at. Um, yeah, I should just leave that in there. <laughs> okay, so we use the, the other equation to get the frequency? Is that what you're talking about? Well, so, so, you know, I'm asking about the decay time, right? Right. So you have um, um, uh, the... Uh, um, You've got an exponential that that has a a real exponent, uh, and you've got an exponential that has a imaginary exponent. And the exponential that has the imaginary exponent is creating the uh, the sinusoidal part. Okay, and so I'm I'm just asking you to look at the exponential that that has the real exponent. Okay, so you just pull that out, and um, um, so so this this p here. Um, it has a, uh, it's at a frequency omega and has a, it has a row, okay? Uh, one over rho is the, is the distance from the center when it's greater than one, okay? So, um, uh, which of those two affects the, the exponential decay part? Yeah, so I don't even, you know, and, and the, the omega part, that's the real part of the complex frequency, omega zero, uh, and that affects, of course, the frequency, right? So if I change it omega but not rho, right, I'm changing the frequency of the sinusoidal part. And if I change rho but not omega, 
then I'm changing the decay time. So your 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 exponential part, you know, the 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 part that um, uh, yeah. So here, uh, you know, you got um, um, one over uh, you got one over rho. Okay, that's what you you get from the the location of the pole you find, right? You find one over rho, and you can see that that that's going to affect the uh, the real part, you know, of this uh, of this uh, exponent. Um, Uh, we got twenty minutes. So next one is six. <laughs> okay. Uh, so oh yeah, sketch the function in equation thirty eight over the range negative pi. You know, omega is p negative pi to pi. Taking care of this thing, trick me to nine. And okay. Um, okay. Equation thirty-eight. Um, okay. So that's obviously a spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, so they're giving it to you. Um, and your your you know, omega is your independent variable. And do they give you? Let's see. Um, now this this is going to depend on um, on number uh, four because what you're getting is the expression in number four exercise four you're getting the expression for the the spectrum of a pole mm -hmm. okay um, so uh, uh, that's actually um, very close to what what this is here. Um, and uh, let's see. And then um, um, so that's let's see here. Yeah, and and here you know here's the development. This is the spectrum of a single pole. Okay, and then here's Figure Nine. What's the what's the difference? You know, here's here's the spectrum of something, right? And there's a pole there, and uh, yeah, yeah, no one can see that's a P, <laughs> I guess. Let's see. Um, so there's uh, um, there's the uh, uh, there's the pole. How many poles though are are in this spectrum? One. Yeah. See, this pole is is not on the real oh, axis. This one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. In Figure Nine. Okay. Yeah. So so here, this is the spectrum of one pole, right? Which is <laughs> that's that's the development there, right? And and here's the spectrum of two poles. So, you know, what's the difference? That's you know, that's what they're asking. Um, so would it just be mirrored in, to, to negative pi? Um, well, the whole point of this figure is that because there's two poles, it doesn't fall. It doesn't fall very fast. And and that's it. You know, it would be um, uh, it would be mirrored, you know, around the 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 zero omega axis, you know, left to right mirrored. Okay. And so th and there's another pole on the other side, and you add those two to get you know. So really, you're you're adding two of these two of these here together, right? And you're uh, you know because this is the spectrum of one pole. And look at it, it's it's really a nice you know kind of sinusoidal function. You know, it ought to be an inverse sinusoid. 
uh, or inverse sine squared. It doesn't blow up, actually. Well, that's why the epsilon's here, right? So, um, um, so it was only one pole. We wouldn't have that here because we wouldn't have a conjugate pole. And then, therefore, yeah. Well, it's going to be it's going to be uh, it's going to be it's going to be a, a, an inverse uh, sine squared. So it's going to be perfectly symmetric around omega zero, and this is not because there's another one over here that's adding to it. You know that's really the uh, the issue. Um, so this one actually, this filter with one pole has too much response at zero frequency. Um, so uh, let's see. Um, yeah, and you can see the the asymmetry. You know, the asymmetry uh, is pretty strong here. Um, okay, <laughs> that's a little more visible. It's just gonna be symmetric around. You said to make it zero. It's so more, so this more. diagram has two poles. Yeah. It's symmetric. So so the spectrum is symmetric around zero frequency. Mm -hmm. Okay, you take that equation for one pole, right? Which of course would give you a you know, if this was just one pole, you'd have a complex filter, which you don't want. But but the the spectrum of it, which is of course real, um, is uh, uh, is symmetric around omega zero, right? And omega zero is this uh, you know this uh, very small frequency. Wow, yeah, that's really small. Yeah. So is that is that clear now? Um, yeah. So, <clears throat> no, it's not clear to me. I mean, so for there to be one pole, it needs to be on zero, and it's going to be. So, so, so like that, here's here's what I suggest. You know, in in are you guys all MATLAB users, or what do you you know? If you want to plot an equation, what do you what do you guys use? Excel, MATLAB, yeah. So so, um, you know, take that take that equation, um, and and plot it, and you'll see you know you'll see it's it's symmetric about yeah this equation here you'll see it's symmetric about omega zero, um, and then. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, just I mean, just you'll have to set some epsilon. You'll have to set some omega zero, right, to, to plot it. But you can uh, then you compare it to to this plot, right, which is two poles, mm -hmm. and and then uh, you'll 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 understand the difference. Okay. And and actually, you'll see you'll see that um, this plot is the sum of two spectra. You know, and it's and this each spectrum is calculated this way. They use the same epsilon, and one is with a positive omega zero, and the other one's with a negative omega zero. You know, between somewhere, but you know, the positive one's one somewhere between zero and pi. The negative one is the same the same distance from zero to minus pi. That's all. So you you know you could you could actually plot the whole thing in uh, in MATLAB. And I, you know, I, I just don't. I, I just want you to understand. I don't want to necessarily see the plots, but I want you to be able to explain it. And and I have it, um, you know, in in my. Um, it's all words in my solution, so I I just want you to be able to explain it. Right. You know, what's symmetric about what, and why. Yeah. All right. So if we have five minutes left. To, I'd like to to ask about eight. Is that was another one where yeah. so I this one is another one to find the poles. So it says given an all pass filter, right? You know, and then it gives you this a certain Z, form. This Z uh, polynomials or whatever. Um, you know, the poles Z P equals two and uh, three. What are B C D E and F? And, <laughs> right. And we're super confused because, like we said with the other one, we were like, well, it, you know, if the denominator goes to zero, then this thing's going to go to infinity. So we did it that way and found B and C. Uh, see, the, the, the crucial thing here is comes in the, the simple form of the all-pass filter. 
So what you've got there is a numerator z polynomial and a, and a denominator z polynomial. Right. But um, recall that the um, come on uh, the all pass filter has a very special form, and that will enable you to break down the al algebra and um, and find all those numbers. Um, let's see. That was at the end of minimum phase, maybe. Energy link. This is all the stuff that uh, Michelle Obama was talking. Okay, here's that. Here's that extra special form for the uh, for the all pass filter. Um, and and so the first thing is to to figure out, you know, how this is f conjugate over f, right? Um, and, and your your uh, you know your your task is to figure out uh, what is f, right? <laughs> um, and then you can get the relation, you know, since the numerator has to be z to the nth power times f conjugate, then that, that tells you what, what d, e, f are. Um, let's see. Um, Yeah, so it's really uh, plugging in that that <coughs> that special form of the all pass filter into the uh, into the um, um, let's see. This is number eight, right? Uh, right, so so you know you you got to see how this corresponds to the special form of the of the all pass filter, and then you'll you know the the uh, the values of all those things fall out, right? I mean you couldn't get five values um, without this being a very you know it's a very special repetitive form, so that's the that's the key. <laughs> okay. So we're going to need more time. I know we told you we've got to know.